these ducks are not to be trusted. They're up to something. Isn't that always the way? You drive over here, you're driving through all the mist, mist hovering a few inches above flat panelled streams, reflections, mist, mood, atmosphere, trees. And then you get to where you plan to photograph and there's none of that. <laughs> oh well, let's go see what we can see. And to top it all off, what was supposed to be a, a nice chilled out, misty, moody... There wasn't any mist! ...morning in the woods. I've just arrived here. And a coachload of... school kids have just turned up. <sighs> so a couple of early tips if you find yourself um, in a forest doing some photography. Firstly, Forget about the wide angle lens. Um, the best type of photography in a forest is, for me, more closer intimate details. Now, I've got the Fuji 18 to 135, um, which works out something like, I'll put it along there. Um, and that I find is a fantastic lens for forest work, um, being able to kind of zoom in to sort of those closer details but also kind of just get maybe a little bit of the forest in. I also have the 1 to 400 with me. That works really well as well obviously giving you real fantastic reach um, but I'll probably work a lot with the 18 to 135. The other thing that uh, I believe you need to do is take your time. Now that could uh, relate to any genre of photography but yeah take your time really concentrate and focus on kind of the light and the mood. Forests are complex, complex to, to photograph. And I don't think you can simply just walk up to a scene and start taking pictures. So I'll find myself spending a few hours in a forest and maybe only cover, uh, you know, maybe half a, half a K or a K or so. So I shall wander on a bit. Autumn's just starting to turn in here rather nice. Um, in regards to how I normally work in a forest, it's kind of both ways. I, I sometimes just wander around with the camera. In fact, I quite often wander around with the iPhone initially, um, just sort of seeing what works, what doesn't work. Um, but I'll quite often wander around handheld. Now, of course, light levels in a forest are naturally going to be lower. Um, but you know, don't worry about sticking your ISO up a little bit. You know, there's so much about photography that, you know, oh, ISO 50. No, put your ISO up. These cameras can handle it. Go handheld, you know, be a bit more um, dynamic because you might actually find a better composition. Now, of course, when you come across something, you might then say, well, actually, maybe a polarizer would sort of bring out some of the extra details in here. Um, and at that point, yes, you may need to kind of set up a tripod, but don't initially kind of wander around with your camera on the, on the tripod. You know, be a bit more spontaneous, be a bit more dynamic. So I've been wandering now for about an hour, just dandering about. Still haven't taken the, um, the main cameras out of the bag yet. Lights, pretty, pretty non-existent. And of course, no mist in here either, but um, still a useful exercise. And in fact, I've come across a scene here in front of me. I kind of like the, the fallen tree and all of the other trees. In my mind, mark of respect, you know, one of the fallen heroes, you know. Make up your own mind on that one. But yeah, this is why I, I kind of don't see any trip out as a complete waste of time because even though I'll probably not shoot anything this morning um, you know it's it's one you kind of put down and say well maybe with the right conditions and the right light that may work could do with a bit more autumnal color on the go but it's 
So it is, it is useful to come out, you know, with your smartphone. Jeez, even with a, a notepad and a, and a pen, a pencil. And, and just wander, just, just dander through. Bimble, that's the word of the day, bimble. So yeah, one for future. But I'm going to keep on walking. So the other thing that, um, another little tip when you're um, shooting in a forest, um, kind of think a little bit differently than, you know, a typical landscape shoot where maybe you're wanting maximum depth of field, so you're shooting at maybe f11 or, you know, even f13 or something. Um, quite often, especially if the mist is around. There wasn't any mist. You don't need that depth of field, and in fact, having a shallower depth of field may actually increase the mood. So, maybe an F5.6 F or something, you know, play around a little bit. Um, and even if there isn't a lot of mist, you know, you might actually find that by having a shallower depth of field, um, it actually does, as I say, enhance that mood, the sort of feeling within the image itself. Um, having a, you know, sharp, front to back image of a, an intimate scene may work, may not, but good opportunity to test um, test the boundaries there. So I can hear those damn small, small kids, school kids. My peace and quiet is about to be ruined. Heck, at least I haven't spotted a clown yet. The other thing I like to look for is bendy trees. You know, especially in the forest like this where, you know, the majority of them are very straight. Slight bendy trees, it almost gives a, a feeling of the trees coming together, you know, a natural dance perhaps, so always looking out for that. And sometimes you get trees that are almost intertwined amongst each other, which can actually work, work pretty well. Maybe this one's a stolen kiss. I don't know. The other thing, if you're looking for mist, don't ask me. I don't know where the mist is. An atmosphere. Um, you'll find if there is going to be mist, it's going to be at the edges of the forest line. Nope, wasn't at the edges either. I don't think you'll see, you know, a huge amount of mist right deep in the centre of the forest. So if if mist is what you're going for. Then, then look to get along the forest edges. Um, that seems to work quite well. Just looking at a at a scene here. Let me show you what I'm looking at. So again, complete tangled chaos. But there, there may be an image here somewhere along the line with the right light. I just love how that tree has obviously kind of fallen over. Well, actually, it's coming out of itself, and all of the moss. Rather nice. And then you have the the covers on the leaves here. So again, some potential in there, maybe. Reminds me a bit like um, the poltergeist, the original one, with the tree coming after you. Oof, on that note, I'm out of here. So I've actually got the camera out. Um, but for only really one purpose. I just wanted to, I mentioned earlier about the use of a polarizer and I've got a couple of images to show you the effect that a polarizer can make and it certainly comes into its own. People use it all you know, quite often for deepening the blues in the sky uh, but for me where it really comes into its own is in a forest. So I'll throw up a couple of um, examples so this is uh, without a polarizer or with a polarizer on but no effect and then this is with the polarizer on full effect <laughs> so you can see quite a quite a dramatic difference it removes the reflections off the water gives you that really deep deep kind of um, darkness on that on that water depending on the, the angle that you're looking at it. And of course it removes the reflections and increases the saturation on those leaves as well. 
So here's an, another example. This wasn't from today. This was from actually yesterday's little forest bimble. So again, polarizer attached but not doing anything. And then this is the polarizer attached and polarizing. So yeah. So I thought I would just set up an example here and show you. Not really much of a scene to be honest, but sun's starting to creep through so we might start to see some little pockets of light. And along those edges we may even get lucky and see a little bit of mist and mood, but I'm not all that much hope. Okay, I take it back. It wasn't school kids, it was uh, preschool kids. And you know what? They've got it sorted. They were jumping in muddy puddles. I can't remember the last time I jumped in a muddy puddle on purpose. It looks like a lot of fun. And I reckon if we had more adults jumping in muddy puddles, the world would be a better place. So before the weekend's out, go and jump in a muddy puddle. Quite difficult to say that. Muddy puddle, muddy puddle, muddy puddle. Yeah, maybe it's not. So got the big board camera out again. <clears throat> um, light starting to come a little bit. You can probably just see it on the side of my face here. Um, so looking at some reflections now and a bit of long exposure stuff. Hey, remember what I said about those ducks? Ruining my bloody long exposure shot. I knew they were up to no good. <sighs> anyway, using a 10 stop uh, ND filter from Format High Tech and um, just using a little bit of the reflection, a little bit of the light to give a bit of a reflection. Now, of course, because we want the reflections now, I'm not using the polarizer. Um, so, but the ducks have ruined my shot. And now they've decided to settle in where I'm taking a shot. Ducks. So that's me done uh, for the morning. Um, not a particularly productive morning from a, an actual taking photographs point of view. I think I was out for three and a half hours. And apart from the two test images that I to show the example of polarization, I think the only other shot that I took, in fact, yes, the only other shot that I took was the long exposure uh, of the reflections, which I don't think is really gonna make make much of a cut. Um, but still a worthwhile exercise. Um, as I said throughout the, the video, there were a couple of compositions that have, have potential. Um, it was useful in itself to see Goodness me, there appears to be a spider. I will try not to eat it. Come on, buddy. Oh. No, it's like a huge giant spider. Anyway, I'll let him down. Um, spiders and ducks, the animal kingdom are conspiring against me. Yeah, the light never really kind of came through. Um, working in a forest, you know, there's very subdued light. What you really want is that piercing kind of light coming through and just opening up little sort of pockets of interest, but it didn't really happen. But as I said, uh, <laughs> just smiling here because the spider's not crawling up my iPhone. Um, still a useful exercise, still an enjoyable morning out on the hoof. Um, I was Maybe going to head somewhere else now and have another bit of a bimble. But I've actually got a few bits and pieces of um, office work to do. So given the fact that I, I think tomorrow and Sunday are going to be potentially better weather days. I'm going to head back home, grab some lunch and um, call it a day from a photography point of view. So s apologies that there maybe hasn't been an end product to today's uh, vlog. But I guess this is a, you know, pretty typical of a landscape photographer's day. Um, there's, he, I'm surprised he hasn't going to walk across the lens. Um, this is this is the the reality of it. You know, I think I've said before, it's not all unicorns pipping rainbows. Um, 
it's quite often 90% of, of my time is spent scouting locations, walking around in pretty average light um, and coming away with little to nothing. But I still love it. I still love what I do. I still love this opportunity. Right. Lunchtime. Hope you enjoyed this, guys. Um, as always, hit the big thumbs up. Um, subscribe so you get the latest content as and when it comes out. And we'll catch up again soon. Oh, and by the way, I now realise why I don't wear a cap when I'm out doing photography that often. Because when you're looking through the viewfinder, you have to wear it like this. And I don't like wearing caps like this. See you soon. Bye-bye.